Good morning, good, uh, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, uh, my name is Shinichiro Fujimori. I'm uh, uh, one of the members of uh, Integrated Assessment Modeling Consortium, uh, IAMC. And thank you very much for joining uh, today's webinar, uh, which is, uh, I think, uh, really interesting for many of uh, us and many of the participants uh, uh, related to this Integrated Assessment Modeling. And uh, let me, uh, yeah, today we we have uh, Mikiko Kainuma, uh, who is going to make a presentation. But before going to the uh, presentation, let me briefly introduce uh, the IMC and uh, and the award. So IMC has uh, a, a few missions, but uh, one of them is to facilitate and foster the development of integrated assessment models. And the conduct of research employing IAMs, including model diagnosis, intercomparison, and coordinated studies. And we also facilitate and coordinate uh, uh, relevant researches uh, uh, with the climate modeling and uh, uh, impact adaptation and vulnerability research communities, uh, which are, I think, uh, closely related to IPCC working group one and two. And, and finally, provide a point of contact with other institutions and organizations interacting with the IAM community. And now we have uh, 71 uh, members uh, uh, globally uh, and uh, from 30 countries and four continents. And as you can see in the right top uh, map uh, where we can see, uh, well, uh, globally, Quite broadly, we, we have uh, institutions uh, participating in, in our community. And we also have uh, five scientific working groups. Uh, each of them have a specific uh, focus and, and, and works uh, uh, yeah, uh, for this community. And yeah, uh, data protocol evaluation and scenarios and so on. And uh, two years ago, we launched a new uh, SWG e, e, as a fifth uh, uh, national scenarios. And so today is uh, uh, specially e, e focusing on, on the award. Uh, and here we invite Mikiko Kaimana, who is a uh, 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 last year's awardees of uh, IMC Lifetime Achievement Award. And so uh, we should know uh, what is this uh, Lifetime Achievement Award before moving uh, on to her presentation. And so this award is given for exceptional lifetime achievement uh, in integrated assessment modeling. And, and so, you know, it, it's not uh, uh, a particular year's contribution, uh, and they, as you can see, they all have an, a great contribution uh, for a long time for this uh, community, and and it it we are not expecting that the award uh, would be given on a regular basis. So or uh, uh, every year we call this nomination, and if we have uh, a good candidate for this award, then uh, it they are uh, uh, elected. And then last year, uh, we selected Michiko Kainuma, uh, who, is, uh, who, uh, who has been working on, on of course, integrated assessment modeling, particularly for Asian uh, countries. And, and she has a great contribution on the build, uh, building of a network of scientists and to the AIM modeling community at the National Institute for Environmental Studies. And Michiko is one of the uh, co-founders of, of the IAMC as well. And so we warmly congratulate and thanks again Michiko for her accomplishments uh, in the field of IAM, which have had a significant impact on a large number of individuals and organizations. Uh, and she's still working uh, uh, at uh, NIS and IGES, uh, to extend uh, this modeling activity to relatively to the real world, real society. And she she's now uh, making a great communication with uh, our policy makers and researchers and reaching uh, those uh, communities, I think. And let me uh, 
finally, he notes that uh, my recognition of, uh, of, of this award for uh, particularly for her and and as a member of uh, AID, uh, I really would like to thank uh, Mikiko. I, I'm also one of the uh, children or grandchildren uh, of uh, AIM co-founders. And I, I'm thinking like, you know, Mikiko as my grand grandmother, uh, she grew me a lot and she gave me uh, a lot of opportunities to learn about this uh, integrated assessment model itself. But beyond that, you know, how to uh, contribute to IMC, of course. Uh, uh, I, I learned a lot from her. And so it, it's a great pleasure for me to uh, moderate this uh, session. And uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing uh, uh, your presentation. And sorry for going, <laughs> before going to the presentation, finally, uh, let me advertise our IMC activity. And as usual, we are gonna have an uh, annual meeting uh, in this November uh, from 14th uh, to 16th. And the call for abstract will be launched uh, maybe uh, this week. So uh, please uh, stay tuned on the website. And if you uh, get this information, please submit your abstract to, to participate in this annual meeting. So thank you very much uh, for waiting uh, for her presentation. And now I would like to give uh, pass to Mikiko or and, and the floor is yours. Uh, please start your presentation. Okay, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for your very kind introduction and good morning and good afternoon, everybody. And I would also uh, like to thank the selection committee of the Integrated Assessment Modeling Consu Consu Consortium for choosing me for the award. I'm very honored to receive this. And also thank you for giving me the opportunity to make a presentation. It gives, gives me a great opportunity to look back on my work. At first, <laughs> I was thinking what I should do, uh, present here, but I thought that the, this is an, a, a lifetime achievement. So I thought it's good that I, sh I uh, let you know the, my experience in this field. Uh, so I'll share my slide. Okay. Okay, now the presentation is working. Okay. Right, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, uh, since you already uh, introduced me and uh, yeah, I'm now today. I am uh, present the role of integrated assessment model in realizing net zero societies from the experience of a model development. So I'd like to focus my 30 years of activities related to IAM and AIM and its relationship with IAMC. I hope that it will be useful for your IAM activities. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, uh, since you already uh, explained the uh, the uh, this, but uh, uh, yeah, and uh, let me start with this right of recipients of recipients. So uh, it's my great pleasure to be among the four other recipients of the award. Everyone around me says that the other four are amazing and then congratulate me. So, uh, yeah, I first met them at an EAS workshop. In 1993, Naki organized the workshop and John sat in front of me. I don't know if he remembered me at this meeting, but he asked me if I knew anyone in Japan who was developing an integrated assessment model. At that time, John was a CRA for the IPCC AR2. I immediately replied, we are developing an integrated assessment model called AIM. He put AIM, AIM on the list of the integrated assessment model in AR2. It was my first time to attend 
an international workshop on climate change, and it was a great experience. So first, I'll introduce a brief history of AIM. And Professor Morita, Professor Matsuoka, and myself started to develop the Asian Pacific Integrated Model called AIM in 1990. At that time, GHG emissions in Asia were not so high, but we estimated that our focus GHG emissions would increase along with economic growth in Asia. We thought that it was important to develop an integrated assessment model and explore the pathways to reduce the greenhouse gases. Importantly, Asian researchers should develop their own models to take actions for climate change, reflecting specific climate and developmental challenges of their nations and use them to assist the policy making processes in their countries. We have supported these policy relevant research activities for 30 years. First, we have developed M end use model Japan and M impact models. The end use model will then apply to Asian countries. M end use global. MCGE, air pollution model, snapshot model, climate model, and impact models has been developed. Yeah, we are developing, still developing, and yeah. A model has been used to analyze Japanese policies as well as other countries in Asia. And we joined EMF and IMC. We have developed networks called LCSR net and uh, local net. LCSRNet originally meant a low carbon society research network, but changed to leveraging climate neutral sustainable societies research network. As the uh, challenge now is to realize a net zero society. We use the same abbreviation and the same logo. Local net means low carbon Asia research network. I'll explain later about these networks. Uh, net zero society must not only emit no, green emit no greenhouse gases, but also be a sustainable society. Today, I will introduce the efforts and the challenges of integrated assessment model M for realizing a net zero society. M results are also used in uh, IPCC reports. In the first few years, we developed, uh, devoted ourselves to developing a model that could analyze Japan's climate policies. Then in 1995, we started looking for participants in uh, or partners in Asia. Uh, Professor Morita and Professor Matsuoka and uh, Professor Harasawa visited several institutes and a university in South Korea, China, India, and Indonesia. So uh, they met uh, Teon Jong and uh, Jang Kei Jung, uh, Dong Kun Lee, and uh, in uh, South Korea, and at ERI, uh, Madame Hu Xiu Ren and Jang Kei Jung. And uh, at India, uh, they met Professor Shukla. I heard that uh, Morita san that Shukra was introduced by uh, J. J. Edmonds. Uh, yeah. And uh, in Jakarta, we met uh, uh, Agas Gandhi. Agas. And uh, so we started collaboration. And at the first M meeting was held in 1996. And you can see Professor Shukra or Jan uh, Kejun, or uh, Teon Jong, Li Dong Kun, and uh, yeah, others. And these two are from Indonesia Ministry of the uh, uh, Environment, Indonesia. Uh, Fahan Helmi and Dadang. And they are still working on these climate change issues. And uh, now, last year, we have the uh, 28th M International Workshop in September 2022. 
and uh, the members uh, increased. And this year also we have the uh, 29th M International Workshop in September uh, 2023. So I briefly introduce the M model. The M model consists of emission model, uh, simplified climate model, and impact models. As for emission models, we started with a national level and this model, and then expanded to global models and local and city models. We have also developed uh, account models and economic models. Some input data are estimated using other models, uh, such as population, transportation, residential, uh, uh, stock flow, and lifestyle models. So uh, local model development especially requires dialogue with policymakers and citizens. A snapshot mod chart uh, called uh, EXSS is useful for this purpose. So impact adaptation models are used to estimate food production, water use, health impacts, and so on. And there are also global, national, and local models. What I mainly uh, developed is the emission model, especially the end use model. So the uh, steps to develop are the carbon scenarios uh, like this. First, we set uh, frameworks and then describe social economic scenarios uh, the using elements, population, lifestyle, and so on, and uh, listing of mitigation options that contribute to achieve net zero emissions. And uh, we use models and uh, first we develop a qualitative scenario and use models to quantify them and uh, iterate this process and finally uh, design the low carbon uh, society's action and roadmaps uh, using this analysis. And uh, so we also developed the, uh, created a database for scenarios. The left figure shows CO2 emissions scenarios surveyed in 1994. As you can see, the figure is shown on a log scale. It means that scenarios have a wide range of emissions. The figure on the right is a scenario evaluated by IPCC L6, published in 2022, scenario that achieved two degrees or 1.5 1 1 degrees in 2100 are uh, illustrated here. It's a challenge to stay below 1.5 degrees. Keeping the temperature below 1.5 requires the implication of all measures all uh, existing and uh, applicable ventures and the cooperation of all countries and people. It is important to develop roadmap showing what actions are needed to and useful to give clear idea of mitigation. So the scenario database was also developed for IPCC AR4 and published as a special issue of the Society for Environment Economics and Policy Studies. A report was also published by the Center for, Environment, uh, uh, Center for Environmental Research at NIES. So the threat scenario was proposed in 2000 and the countermeasure scenarios uh, published in at the IPCC AR3 in 2001. However, considering the base year of stress was 1990, and that many challenge changes have occurred since then, such as socioeconomic conditions and technological innovation, the need to develop new scenarios has arisen. So arose. So in response, 
the IPCC held an expert meeting in 2007 toward new scenarios for analysis of emissions, climate change impacts, and responses strategies. Recognizing that the IPCC is not an organization that creates scenarios, the IPCC called for a research community to lead the development of new scenarios that could be used by climate modelers in the development of ensemble experiments for both the near term and long term. In response, we established the IAMC in 2007. At the scenario meeting, it was decided to consider four scenarios, ranging from the scenario with the lowest possible emissions to the scenario with the highest emissions. For the raw scenarios, we needed to consider whether the radiative forcing should be 2.6 or 2.9 watt per square meters. We can really achieve 2.6 scenarios and such kind of discussion were uh, we, we did. And the uh, evaluation panel uh, reviewed the feasibility of RCP 2.6 and submitted a report to the IPCC stating that it is feasible. But we, we had very if something, if something, there are many co uh, conditions. As a result, it was decided to develop RCP 2.6 as a new emission scenario and provide it to the climate group. So the uh, ease of countermeasures varies depending on the socio-economic situations. So we need to develop scenarios based on the same socio-economic conditions. Therefore, it was decided to develop shared socio-economic pathways called SSPs. The three scenarios were classified to two axes, the level of economy and the level of globalization. The SSPs described a social image based on two axes, challenges of mitigation and the challenges of adaptation. Five social uh, images were proposed. They were uh, sustainable, the middle of the roads, regional rivalry, inequality and the fossil fuel de development societies. M provides uh, SSP three scenarios. Scenarios combining SSP and RCP are uh, being evaluated in AR6. So next I'll explain how the national and subnational scenarios uh, have been developed using the AI model. The core team in Japan developed the basic models at the NIS and the, with, with the help of Kyoto University. And the developed models are shared with collaborators in each country. Application may be different for each country. Researchers from each country have dialogue with policymakers to develop, to develop scenarios. Usually, policymakers request more practical, realistic roadmaps and also tract tractable tools for applying to the real world. So far, we have developed scenarios for countries such as China, India, Indonesia, and Thailand, as well as city level scenarios such as Ahmedabad, Iskandar, Malaysia, and Jakarta. You can get some of these scenarios from the this uh, website. So the results are summarized in individual reports and several books have been published. The first book on AIM is Climate Policy Assessment, uh, published in 2002. At the time of COP8 held in India, Professor Shukura held a workshop in New Delhi, so we prepared a book for it. The figure at the middle illustrates the contents of chapters. The book provides endless model for China, India, Korea, Vietnam, and Japan, with the uh, detailed manuals for the endless model. 
The global model is also developed to analyze policy options packages, and at that time for stabilizing at 550 ppm, and we used stress scenarios. Special uh, distribution of CO2 emissions and SO2 emissions were analyzed in China and India. So air pollution was yeah, still the main, uh, one of the main domestic issues in these countries. So a uh, simple scenario development model called AI trend was also developed for discussion with stakeholders. Unfortunately, Professor Tsuneki Morita, the leader of the AIM project at that time, passed away in September 2003. Professor Shukula kindly published an Indian AIM book four, later, four months later, in memory of Professor Morita. So the emission model in the book of the climate policy assessment were mainly focused on the Andes model. But in 2017, Professor Fujimori took the lead in publishing a book called Post-2020 Climate Action, which focuses on the CGE model and from China, India, Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, Japan, as well as a global model. So I'll move on to the networking. So we have worked hard to develop models and we have also worked hard for networking. Exchange option, opinions with many people is very important in developing scenarios that can be used in the real world. So far, we have uh, operated LCSL net centered on Europe and Japan and local net centered on Asia. LCS Net is a network of researchers and research institutions closely involved in national climate policies. LCS Net was established from a Japanese proposal at the 2008 Environmental Ministers Japan uh, Ministers meeting in Japan. Uh, the network is led by research institutions from five countries, Japan, Germany, France, Italy, and the UK, and has contributed to international policy processes by sharing and disseminating research results, providing feedback to national policy processes and supporting efforts by various up actors to realize a climate neutral society. So the sad, the uh, this the the illustrated the uh, come from the uh, result of the first annual meeting of LCS Net, uh, LCS Net. Uh, It was held in Bologna, Italy, in two thousand nine. So uh, at this first meeting, uh we are focused on two degree target. And uh, Jimski presented a result in the UK case. It was the uh, about 80% reduction but, uh, compared to 1990. And uh, they, they, Edmonds, uh, uh, showed the scenario, uh, 450 ppm scenario, and Shukura also showed the uh, uh, two degree scenario. And, and I myself uh, explained the, this two degree scenario focusing on in Japan and showed the uh, 12 action, uh, 12 actions. Uh, in Japan, at that time, our target is 70% reduction. And but to as for the uh, now we are focusing on 1.5 degrees. So uh, in 2018, uh, net zero scenarios for India, China, Japan, Korea, Thailand, Nepal, Germany, and Bra Brazil were developed and published as a special issue of carbon management. Net zero scenarios for Thailand and Nepal are cited in AR6. On a global scale, analysis of uh, 
set of scenarios to achieve the 1.5 target indicate the need to achieve net zero around the year of 2050. What is needed now is concrete measures on how each country and local government can achieve net zero. And uh, uh, realizing a net zero society is important. And we can all, we can, what we call a net society is not simply a society with uh, zero emissions. We need a sustainable society that achieves the SDGs at the same time. Each country has different policy priorities for achieving uh, such a society. So there are many issues to be solved together, such as air pollution, forest management, energy access, job creation, and food security. Researchers and policymakers picked up several priorities. Uh, also. Uh, for example, for Cambodia, uh, they, they are interested in energy access, sustainable forest management, and food security. For China, uh, they are interested in air pollution, energy access, and increase of export of clean technologies. And India also, they are interested in the air pollution and uh, to avoid air pollution and to and the job creation and field security and so on. So uh, uh, this is the uh, slide, the left slide is showed at the local net activity, show the local net activities in 20. 21. So uh, the we uh, the we are working for the national level scenario for the Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, and uh, the uh, as for the subnational city level scenario, Jakarta, West Java, Kalimantan, Lampung. Uh, this is Laos and uh, Kuala Lumpur, uh, Malaysia. So, uh, Ms. Ishikawa presented at M workshop uh, in 2021. And the result were uh, presented uh, the this year's uh, local net uh, annual meeting. So, the uh, uh, I will uh, set the uh, the structure or summarize the our activities. And the, uh, yeah, global, mo we need first the global long term uh, target. And so you, you use global models and we have the result that we need emissions to net zero around 2050. And to realize these uh, net zero emissions, we need a uh, national and subnational and midterm and long term uh, target uh, scenarios. So uh, each country has their own net zero uh, target, the, the year of the target, target year. Uh, for example, the uh, uh, Japan uh, declared net zero emissions by 2050 and uh, China by 2060, in India by 2070 and Thailand by 2065. Developing a roadmap to reach that goal is uh, becoming increasingly important. For that purpose, it is helps, helpful to develop scenarios and roadmaps for nation and subnational government. And uh, yeah. So uh, we first set mitigation target and uh, and use models and uh, develop roadmap and uh, uh, pathways and roadmaps. And these data and result, uh, of course, we are working together with various stakeholders to develop uh, result and also presented the result to stakeholders and to the uh, uh, to the uh, po policy makers. And this is an example of application of M, and this is an example in Thailand case. 
And in Thailand, Professor Bundit uh, from Tamasat University has developed a Thailand scenario using the A model. The A model has been used to develop scenarios uh, for Thailand's national communication. The figure on the right is a document in the Thailand Third National Communication. M was used to estimate BAU. And the Professor Bundit also used uh, the A model for the uh, to estimate the long term low, low greenhouse gas emissions pathways. And the result was also used by the Thai government and uh, the result was uh, 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 showed. The result was there uh, in the uh, Thailand mid-century long-term low greenhouse gas emission development strategy. And the Andrews model and the uh, CG model are used uh, to develop this long and uh, term long emission development strategy. And the M model in the application of M also used in Indonesia. And uh, the Professor Rizal de Boa and Professor Retono and Professor Uchok are working on this uh, uh, to, on this and develop a model using a model and to develop st long term strategies in Indonesia. So uh, M and use model and M EXS model, it's a snapshot type model and to communicate with stakeholders and MCG model uh, mainly developed by uh, uh, Professor Fujimori. Uh, these models are used for uh, develop a long-term strategy in uh, Indonesia. So uh, this slide shows the expected structure to support policy in, in Asian countries. In addition to cooperate among researchers, cooperation between researchers and governments, and cooperation between governments are necessary to develop scenario for each country's NDC and L LTS. For this purpose, it is desirable to make an agreement between governments. The uh, light blue boxes, there are three, uh, four, four light blue boxes here, and this box were added. Uh, this uh, figure was presented by, uh, developed by uh, Dr. Masui, and uh, the uh, blue uh, boxes added by uh, uh, Ms. Ms. Ishikawa uh, to show the uh, Vietnam cases. And it is actually, uh, we are collaborating closely with the Vietnam government, also the uh, Vietnam researchers, researchers of, from the Eastbourne Ray, and the, as for the government representative, one day was involved. And from Japan side, Japanese, Japanese Ministry of Environment, Japanese Embassy in Vietnam and JICA, Vietnam are uh, involved in these processes. And we are now uh, developing the, uh, uh, in, in the uh, Vietnam's uh, scenarios. So uh, I'll move on to the uh, here, future research activities. One of the topic is just and sustainable transition. What is important is how to make transition toward low and to zero carbon and sustainable society. At the 12th annual meeting of LCSRNET in 2021, Professor Dirk Lubach of drift in the Netherlands gave a keynote speech. According to him, net zero cannot be achieved by simply improving the current systems. Optimization within the existing systems increase the investment in them and help the current system to continue or to survive, which doesn't lead to a decarbonized society. 
There are so many technologies and social innovations that provide the basis for a much more systemic and transformative shift to a nature positive economy. The slide on the right is the, uh, presented by Michael Graff at the 13th LCS Arnett meeting in 2022. Professor Ruba points out that their current system needs to be reorganized in order to transition to a sustainable society. This path corresponds to the blue line, uh, this, this one in the uh, uh, graph, uh, Michael's uh, picture. To move to sustainable society, new dominant technology systems, practices, and rules and institutions are required. Another topic is, is to continue to develop city-level scenarios. So far, many city-level scenarios have already been developed, but they are not enough. The current scenario needs to be improved, and the new scenario needs to be developed in other cities. There are so many cities in Asia. An important part of city level scenario is city level scenario development is to inform and listen to stakeholders about climate change. For this purpose, uh, LocalNet holds lots of science policy dialogues. The upper left picture shows science policy dialogue in Bangkok in March to 2023. The lower left picture shows a consultation workshop in Lam Prabang in Laos. Using a model city level scenario for Japan, China, India, Malaysia, and Indonesia, and Thailand, Vietnam, Korea, uh, Cambodia, Laos has been developed. The list shows some of these outputs. Uh, you can find some of the reports of NIST website. Another topic is uh, uh, research uh, that considers mitigation and adaptation. If the target of 1.5 degrees cannot be achieved and the temperature rises by two degrees or three degrees, adaptation is necessary. Even if the temperature rises less than 1.5 degrees, there are places that uh, impacts where impacts are already happening. This figure uh, from the present is from the presentation by Dr. Mat Matsutomi at Nice at the 26 ARM International Workshop. This show this shows the case of mitigation and adaptation in uh, Vietnam. The left figure shows the yield changes corresponding to RCP 2.5, RCP 4.5, RCP 6.0, and RCP 8.5. The uncertainties shown by the vertical Y come from the different results of GCNs. The black circle shows the average, and the horizontal bars show the median. You can see the yields decreases in RCP 8.5 scenario in the 2060s. The upper figure shows the case of high temperature tolerant variety, and the lower, case, lower figure shows the case of drought tolerance variety. You can see that the high temperature tolerance variety can reduce the impacts, but the effects of drought tolerance are small. The, figure sh the right figure shows uh, yield changes of the high tolerance variety and the irrigation system cases under the RCP 8.5 scenario in the 1960s compared to the case without adaptation. The figure also shows the effectiveness of the high tolerant variety. The right figure shows the effects of the adaptation are different among provinces. It is necessary to identify and take effective adapt adaptive options by provinces. According to Dr. Mastomi, some improvements still need to be made for publication. One that calculations are made assuming a heat 
Tuland variety, but they do not actually exist yet. So further surveys on these species are necessary. In addition, the results show the different effects of adaptation measures by provinces. It needs to be clarified. It may be caused by different ter terrains, different soil characteristics, land use, or some other things. So it requires it requires further studies, but it is a helpful helpful thing about mitigation and adaptation strategies. Dr. Mastomi wrote uh, already wrote a report on heat tolerant rice varieties in Japan in a uh, warming climate. Uh, research on co-benefit and trade-offs related to uh, climate change is very important. And uh, so uh, this slide shows, uh, left, upper left slide shows the uh, est an estimate of co-benefits for air pollution under different SSPs. This research was conducted by Professor Fujimori. So if you have any questions about this research, please ask him. The lower left figure is an example of estimating changes in water demand under BAU NDC two degrees and well below two degrees. This res this research was done by uh, Sarifa Sam. The figure on the right research uh, is a uh, research on trade-offs related on food security. In order to limit uh, the temperature rise to, the, to two degrees, it is necessary to use the carbon dioxide remover. To increase forest uh, uptake, we need to grow more forests, also biomass power generation with carbon capture and storage is necessary to achieve negative emissions. To do this, this we need more biofuel, biofuel plantations. Land is finite. By night. So you have to think about what purpose you use it for. Blue is the impact of climate change, and red is the impact of mitigation. So blue part shows the change in population risk of hunger caused by climate change, and red part shows change by mitigation effects. So the population at risk of hunger will increase under RCP scenario. Of course, if the gain, grain, grain yield per unit area increase, it may be possible to increase the yield on a small amount of land. However, the question is whether high yielding seeds can be produced or not, and how much land is available to grow high yield of seeds. So uh, the another important thing I'm thinking is the uh, involvement of citizens. How can we involve citizens? It is an, uh, also an important, important topic. To achieve climate citizen assembly is one useful option. Climate citizen assemblies are meeting of randomly selected citizens to learn, discuss, and make recommendations about climate change. Since it had, was held in France in 19, 2019, many national governments and local uh, governments held climate citizen assembly. Near, mainly in Europe, especially in the UK, about 30 uh, assemblies have been held in the UK municipalities. Scenarios used in the UK assembly and Oxford assembly. However, as far as I know, it seems that the recommendations have not yet been quantified. This meeting is very helpful to develop scenarios and implement them. So a uh, uh, quantification of recommendation is the next step, I think. An important aspect of the climate citizen assembly is the participation of the general public in increasing understanding and making the revelations on climate change. By quantifying scenarios, we can expect to deepen the understanding of climate change. And there are several tools for this. And for example, EXSS, this can help to show the CO2 emissions reduction by countermeasures. Further development of participatory method methodologies for improving citizens, involving citizens is expected. 
So uh, there are many other things to consider. Uh, uh, realize net self scenarios. These include behavior change, financing, and low carbon infra infrastructure, and so on. So, uh, yeah. So thank you for your attention. I leave time for uh, discussion. Thank you. So uh, I, 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 I have to say that no time to waste. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Nikiko. Uh, your presentation was uh, really, really interesting uh, to see uh, that, you know, in Hagana, uh, uh, very broad activities from uh, global to uh, national and even subnational scale. Okay, so now we have, uh, uh, let's say, around five minutes uh, getting the questions or comments. And if you have uh, questions or comments, uh, please use uh, raise your hand, hand functionality and we will be able to get a few. Alternatively, you can uh, also use uh, the question box uh, and write your questions and comments, then um, people may be able to uh, answer to some of them. Okay, Folga. Uh, okay. Does this work? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I posted my questions in the Q and A section. First of all, uh, many thanks, Mikiko, for for the interesting uh, uh, presentation. Also, providing this historical perspective on integrated assessment modeling in Asia, and specifically the contributions of the AIM network. I was wondering what, in in retrospective, uh, from your perspective, are the reasons for the success of the AIM network and its impact on the one hand on establishing national and also subnational centers for integrated assessment modeling in many Asian countries and ultimately also its impact on policy making. What would you say are the uh, were the most uh, important ingredients for for this success? Thanks. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for your uh, uh, question. And yeah, actually, it's very, very difficult and uh, it's still not perfect. And uh, one reason is the uh, one thing is the Professor Matsuoka, uh, his, uh, his role is very important. He developed main uh, models and, uh, and also we have uh, many get uh, this many students, including Fujimori-san, and uh, Professor Matsuka sent us many uh, researchers to NIS. And so uh, we need uh, researchers uh, to develop models. And also, uh, uh, Professor Matsuka had a, a, a project of JICA uh, called the Satellites, and we started collaboration in the uh, Iskandar Malaysia, uh, Professor Ho uh, is the counterpart. And uh, we have, um, until the five, five years, my understanding, the uh, project, and uh, we have many, many uh, stakeholder meeting. And uh, so it's not an easy task, but the students, also the professors, other professors at the uh, Malaysia uh, in, Tech, uh, technology uh, Malaysia, University of Technology Malaysia are very, very excellent. And to, uh, so uh, we have uh, improved our models and we have a lot of stakeholders and our staff uh, and other staff, um, especially Shikawa-san, have done a lot to uh, organize uh, workshops. But still, <laughs> uh, we need more researchers. And, more, and, and I had, uh, Ishikawa-san had a request to develop more uh, scenarios in other countries, but uh, the uh, researchers, we don't have enough researchers. So, uh, but anyway, if, uh, 
first the dialogue is very important and uh, to keep in to have the uh students and that and the, uh also the researchers that can develop these scenarios and uh, yeah yeah okay thank you right <laughs> so <laughs> you also you may also know <laughs> about this no, no, no. I, I have no idea what was the really critical element to to drive the AIM modeling community to like a uh, current uh, form, and uh, so it, it it's really yeah unknown to me, and and it, and I think focus questions are a really fundamental one, and still need to be a, yeah uh, ask self ask. Uh, to ourselves as well. And okay, um, are there any other questions or comments? If no, or let us take one uh, QA function uh, comments. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, let me read. Uh, how is it run? I wonder if local net models and supporting materials are available online to be used for other worldwide regions. So uh, I guess the model means here AIM models and uh, uh, model documentation, I guess supporting material means uh, model documentation. And are they available online uh, to be used for other uh, regions, not, not limited to Asia, but for example, for African countries? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's very, very important thing, and yeah, it's very important. And to uh, as I introduced the in book, and we at that time we, we the to develop to develop the model by themselves in the in the Asian countries. So we uh, prepared a mania, very uh, detailed mania. And at that time, we put a model itself on the website, uh, NIS website. But uh, we are not a specialist for this uh, mod model. We develop the models, but this interface is not our specialty. And uh, uh, at the uh, meeting or uh, the capacity building meeting, we invited uh, researchers from Asian countries and uh, trained them. But we had many, uh, it's very difficult to run the, it takes time to run the model we, because we are, the interface is, we, we don't develop interface for them. So uh, very, very small uh, mis misleading the, for example, the, the the shape the format of the input data then the model cannot run so but uh, if we are there they we can check them but uh if we open it and uh, it's the interface is not good so the uh the others cannot uh run the model make the possibilities very high so now the model is not on the website uh I understand up uh, currently. I hope uh, this model can be and put on the model. And uh, also, it uh, we use uh, special software games and uh, games uh, we have to pay for the for that. So and the uh, simple games, the uh, trial games cannot run the model, the whole model. And so it's also an, another obstacle. But uh, yeah, uh, to the uh, Fujimori san uh, also published a book and he put uh, the mania for the CG model. Yeah. So, so. yeah, okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so basically, uh, a model is not uh, available online freely, but probably in the near future, uh, part of the AIM models uh, will be available or, or in, in somewhere. Uh, and yeah, uh, 
Uh, thank you very much. Uh, time has already been passed and uh, uh, it's already yeah, 7 p.m. Uh, in Japan. And we should finish uh, today's session. And uh, uh, But we have uh, more than 10 questions right now uh, in, in the Q&A box. So we will be sending uh, these uh, questions to the speaker. And, uh, and there might be some uh, chances uh, to answer to those questions. I'm not sure that uh, uh, we can have an interaction with you, but hopefully we, we have some uh, other uh, opportunities uh, to answer to you all questions. All right, so uh, let's go. Uh, I definitely to try to answer these questions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, thank you very much. So thank you very much to Nikiko again and congratulate on, on your award. And thank you very much uh, for the, all of the participants. Uh, it, it was a really, really great opportunity to have this conversation here. So let's close. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.